holy, holy, holy Shabbat. We can rest now in the hands of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. We'd like you, first of all, to put your phones on silent, please. We'd also like you to prepare them. Prepare it, please. And also, thank you. Let us have a time of prayer. We'd like to invite everybody to worship. For those who are present, is there any special prayer request? I see one. I have a special request as well. The time that we have right now is approximately 7 45. Oh, 7.51. Thank you. I wanted to make sure my clock was correct. Let's have a word of prayer. Let us kneel for those who are able. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, which you were sealed to the day of redemption. Father, we come before you, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. And in the name of your Son, who sits on the right hand side, we bow before you, give you reverence, Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach. Bless us this evening as we enter your Sabbath, as we cease in doing our labors, our personal below our work activities, pleasure, to give you reverence this evening. Be with those who are preparing to enter your Sabbath. Bless them and guide them, we ask for your mercy upon them. And may thy Holy Spirit be given to every soul in the world who obeys you and obeys your commandments. We ask for a special blessing for those who are preparing for baptism, that you may walk with them and they may walk with you tonight, this evening. Holy Vespers. May the meditation of my mind be directed by you. May the words be defined for those who do not understand these words. Help them to study Yeshua. Surround them with your holy presence and hug them this evening. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. Begin this evening, we'd like to share a few key points that I have. The casket in the study that I'm preparing, it's entitled The Casket that Alan White Wrote Represents the Advent Truth. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 11 are yet to be found, which are jewels to come into the sanctuary. A. The time, 1843. B. There is a tarrying time. These are studies that one should know already. See the midnight cry at the seventh month in 1844. The midnight cry will be given by the procession. I put those studies out. And each one of you should have an opportunity to view them and understand them. There are an hour, some of them are an hour and a half. That information is a lot for you to sit down, take your notes, and focus in regards to the correct messages. D, the shut door should be understood. That shut door was 1844. The shut door represents the information in regards to the holy place being shut. Christ transitioned in the year 1844, October 22nd, to the Most Holy of Holies. Who have rejected their own experience and have denied the very truth? Remember that William Miller's death was December 22, 1849. Number one, a loss of Seventh-day Adventist identity among some pastors and church members. Number two, the growing tide of worldliness in many of our churches is growing in leaps and bounds. Number three, the danger of disunity. And what's happened here is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church leadership has caused this. And Diane Dip, Religious Liberty Director, lost to the core. 
3 ABN, Amazing Facts. All these people who have money, have ministries, and preach into the world a bunch of apostasy to the core. Number four, a spiritual complacency and apathy which leads to a lack of involvement in the mission of the church. And for this moment, I will pause in regards to what I'm about to share this evening. Many lights are going to go out, and they're going out right now. For those of you that are entering the Sabbath, you like to know your references, you may read in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 4. There's a Sabbath rest, still remains, verse 4. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, discusses the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath, you keep it only six days out of our labor from Friday to Shabbat day. That's the Sabbath. Read the commandments, Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. In Leviticus, however, chapter 23, which is the foundation of his Torah, is found in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. That's the weekly Sabbath. The Sabbath is a seal and test for his remnant people, true remnant people. He's not going to seal a no one in air and truth. And some of these people, for example, like Truth Triumphant with Pastor Bill Hughes and Cody and all their members and they're all that they're sharing, it's good, but they're using books of a new order. Yeah, they're calling them in, but they're giving wrong prophecies, wrong information. They continue to use early writings, continue to use testimonies, ones one through nine. Isn't it a shame that the Holy Spirit is not in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? We'll speak on that tomorrow. Our topic this evening is the Meteor Fall, Part 83. The Meteor Fall, Part 83. Meteors are going to hit Tennessee like nobody's business, and it's coming. They want to worship Queen Diana, that big old statue that's out there that was actually put up out there in Egypt. We've got history here. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. Father, in the name of Yeshua, as we open thy word, we ask for a spirit of discernment this evening, this holy vespers. As you come and visit us, we ask that we may enter into thy sanctuary and spirit and truth. That you may enlighten us this evening and help us to understand these prophecies that are going to occur in our time. And prepare us and protect us with your angels. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Yahushua. Amen. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. In reading, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne, which is referring to the holy place. That altar is in the holy place. The holy place is sealed. No human being can go in there. Literally. Spiritually. We may go through there, yes, but we must be in the most holy of holies where our Savior is at interceding on our behalf. Can we hear an amen? He's your lawyer. He's your great high priest. In reading, turn with me to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar. The altar is very important. The altar of incense deals with the prayers of the saints. Having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, referring to the holy place. Our topic this evening is the meteor fall, part 83. And I'd like to begin here, number one. This is the vision that Ellen White received that I'd like you all to pay attention. So there are millions of Seventh-day Adventists that are moving out to Tennessee because the land is less expensive than elsewhere. Well, we got news for you. If you're going to go there, white people that live out there in Tennessee, they don't like black people. That's a fact. I'm not prejudiced here. I'm, I'm giving you facts. Just dessert. Number two, the meters are going to hit that state, and it's going to destroy it. That big statue that's out there representing the pagan god, goddess Diana, that's one reason, but there's more reasons. 
Those meteors are going to hit different locations. The East Coast is going to turn back to slavery of every nationality opposing the laws of the land that are coming out, and they're already coming out. Now they're going to be enforced. Are the people ready? The people now are leaving to different countries, etc. Well, if they haven't been faithful here in the United States, evangelizing and giving Bible studies, what makes us all think that they're all going to be safe in other third world countries or in other country? Because what they're doing here, they're going to do it in the third world countries. Let's continue. Number one, on Friday, on Friday night, which is Vespers, Vespers tonight, but this is July 1st, 1904, at Nashville, Tennessee, Ellen White was given a view of apocalyptic doom. The next morning, toward the, ha the close of a sermon in the chapel of the Southern Publishing Association, she made a brief, if oblique, reference to it. Last night a scene was presented before me. I may never feel free to reveal all of it, but I will reveal little. Manuscript, MS 102, page 9, 1904, and you may read the whole manuscripts. If you don't see the number, it's because I didn't put it there. I want you to turn to it. I'm not going to make things easy for nobody no more. I want you to search. I'm giving you the reference, and now you continue reading in general, of what's being discussed of the prophecy that's coming. <coughs> Four months later, writing in the Review and Herald, she elaborated upon this very impressive scene. Manuscript 102, page 9, 1904. She says, I saw an immense ball of fire. Take note. Look at this. Falling among some beautiful mansions, causing their instant destruction, I heard someone say we knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know that they would come so soon. Hmm? Others said, you knew? You knew and you didn't tell me about it? You didn't preach about it? Why didn't you tell me about it? Now I'm going to get a bad and doom you down because I got the mark of the beast. This is really what's going on. Let me read. We knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know that they would come so soon. Others said, you knew? Why then did you not tell us, Seventh-day Adventists? We did not know. On every side I heard such words spoken. This is why I'm trying to get my family ready. That's my concern first. My sons, my daughters, my wife, our relatives. That's my concern. They're more worthy because they're your blood. And you want to see them baptized. You want to see them converted. You want to see them in the kingdom. So why are you evangelizing out there on the other side of the country, out there in third world countries, when you can't even evangelize your own family? They come first. No one's telling you to move from Texas to Illinois or from Texas, for that matter, to Tennessee, knowing that these prophecies are coming and you're going to go there. Are you going there to go into your grave quicker than our Savior had it planned for you? Come on, Seventh-day Adventists. Everybody into, out there in Thousand Oaks, California, the ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they all moved and transitioned and went to Tennessee only because the property is less expensive. Mercy, 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 mercy. We knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth, but we did not know that they would come so soon. Others said, you knew? You knew Seventh-day Adventist pastors? You didn't tell us? Why then did you not tell us? Families, we did not know. On every side I heard such words spoken. Number two. Two years later, at Sanitarium in Salina, California, which is down the hill from Angwin College or Angwin University, August 24th, 1906, she had a similar dream again. She characterized it as a very impressive scene of a terrible conflagration. In her diary, that's Alan G. White's diary, that morning she wrote, In the night I was, I thought in a room not in my own house. I was in a city where I knew not, and I heard expression after expression. 
Now I want to share something here, what's going on here. This is down the hill from Angwin University. Walk down the hill. All the people that live in Angwin, California, and all the surrounding areas in San Elena, California, Calistoga, all that area, guess what? In Santa Rosa, California, Windsor, California, Hillsborough, California, all that area. San Francisco, if they can get out of there, they all ran up. Where? They all ran up to the University of Anquin, California, Seventh Day Avenue School, Pacific Union University, Pacific Union College, in other words, PUC. They got boulders, big rocks. Multitudes and multitudes running up, climbing upon each other, etc., getting away from the police, getting away from martial law, getting away because they're after them. Thousands of them going up the mountain. Boom, boom, they're going up there, pushing each other out of the way, trying to get up there because the Sunday law has been passed. This is what Alan G. White saw. I remember briefly, people, because when I was there attending school, I remember how everybody was speaking about what was coming. Maybe a lot of them have already passed away or in countless in homes. But may their names be written in the book of life because they were sincere and brought out of the book of iniquity. Are we sincere tonight? Are we going to get ready? Because the whole East Coast goes back into slavery. The whole East Coast goes into a, <laughs> goes into a 360 degree change. Let me continue. I rose up quickly in bed. I saw from my window large balls of fire. Boom, boom. Jetting out were sparks in the form of arrows and buildings were being consumed. And in a very few minutes the entire block of buildings was falling and the scorching and mournful groans came distinctly to my ears of Valen G. White to prepare a people in their last days to be in the kingdom to repent and be baptized and obey his commandments and his moedims. She says, I cried out in my raised position to learn what was happening. Then I awoke, but I could not tell where I was, for I was in another place than home. I said, O oh Lord, where am I and what shall I do? It was as a voice that spoke, be not afraid. Nothing, nothing shall harm you. And I'm inserting Alan G. White. This is what was shown to her. This is who was speaking to her was the angel. Because she was the messenger of Elohim. So for all of you people out there in the world, all billions of you that want to reject Alan G. White, I... I got, I got some souring, souring tears for you. Because it's coming. And by the way, it's here. The Mark of the Beast, it's here. It's in Congress, it's in the Protestant churches, and the Seventh-day Adventist church knows it. Because they're going to betray you to the Catholics. Spawn and Megan, page one. I was instructed that the destruction had gone forth upon cities. Now listen to me. I was instructed that the destruction had gone forth upon cities. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Isaiah 29, verse 19 to 24. Come on, let's turn to our Bibles. We got Bibles? Now let's go turn to Isaiah, chapter 29. Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah is a very powerful prophet. And I wouldn't trifle with him either. Isaiah chapter 29, let's begin with verse 19. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 19. In reading, The meek also shall increase their joy in the Yahweh, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Can we hear an amen? Let's read verse 20 now. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Now listen to me. Look at verse 21. Read it with me. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. 
Therefore thus saith the Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. Verse 23. Yes, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 23. But when he seeth his children the work of my hands, in the midst of him they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the Elohim of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Interesting. Interesting. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Isaiah 29, verse 19, 24. Was repeated. I dared not move, not knowing where I was. I cried unto the Lord, what does it mean? See, she didn't comprehend how that was given to her. These representations of destruction were repeated. Manuscript 102, 1904. Question, where am I? Said the Lord, in scenes I have represented that which will be. But warn my people, now listen here. This is love, okay? Now listen to what's being said now. Now she's being counseled. But warn my people to cease from putting their trust in men. Stop putting your trust in pastors tonight. Stop putting your trust in me. Study and understand that you need to trust Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Stop putting... But warn my people to cease from putting their trust in men who are not obedient to my warnings and who despise my reproof. For the day of the Lord is right upon the world when evidence shall be made sure. Those who have followed the voices that would turn things upside down will themselves be turned where they cannot see but will be as blind men. Are you understanding what's going on in your churches now? The blind lean the blind. Read. These words were given me from Isaiah 30, verse 8 to 15, quoted. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 30, and we're going to read verses 8 to 15. Let's take a reading. Can you read in your hearing? Isaiah chapter 8, verses 8 to 15. Now go write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be before the time to come forever and ever. Listen to me. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law, which is the Torah of the Yahweh, which say to the seers, pastors, prophets, see not, and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, Seventh-day Adventists, pastors, deacons, and elders, and presidents, independent ministries, self-supporting ministries. Preach to us self smooth things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prophesy deceit, or deceits. Verse 11. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to seize from before us. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shred of to take fire from the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. Now here's verse 15. Verse 15. For thus saith the Yahweh Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, in returning, <clears throat> excuse me, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall your strength and ye 
would not. Commentary, Manuscript 24, 1887. We need a calm waiting upon God. The need of this is impressive. in Paris. It is not the noise and bustle we make in the world which proves our usefulness. See how silently God works. We do not hear the noise of his steps, and yet he is walking about us, laboring for the good, laboring for our good. Excuse me. Jesus did not seek for notoriety. His life-given virtue was going out to the needy and the afflicted through silent actions whose influence extended far into all countries as was felt and expressed in the life of millions of human beings. Those who desire to labor with God have need of His Spirit every day. They need to walk and labor in meekness and humility of spirit without seeking to accomplish extraordinary, extraordinary things, satisfied to do the work before them and doing it faithfully. Faithfully. Those words, these words, excuse me, were given me from Isaiah 30, verses 8 to 15, that we should take heed of, because this is not over yet. While you are sealed, you're going to be tested. Oh, well, I'm sealed, I'll have to be tested no more. No, no, no. You're going to continue to be tested. Judgment. Turn with me to Revelation 14, verses 12 to 15. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Yeshua. This is referring to the last remnant of verse history. Now. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, which actually die in Elohim from henceforth. Yeah, saith the Spirit that they may rest from their laborers and their works do follow them. These are the faithful people that are dying off and that are going to be martyred for the three angels' messages and for the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. Look at verse 14 now. It's talking about Yeshua. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. He is the one that reaps the 144,000, the barley harvest. He is the one that reaps the remaining multitude. He is the one that reaps the grapes, the wicked, at his third advent. He is the one that's doing the reaping, that's going to do the reaping. The angels gather the people in bundles. So while you're preparing yourself out in the country, etc., you're going to leave there for a little while, but guess what? You're not going to be there very long. Because from there, the angels are going to move you to the final location until the second coming of Yeshua HaMashiach. Remember that. Let's read verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple. That other angel is the fifth angel that repeats the first angel's message. That fifth angel repeats judgment of the living has come. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud who He's talking to Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the one that's sitting on the cloud in verse 14. And he tells Yeshua, Yeshua, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap, Yeshua. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And I put it in blue because it's the 144,000 he's going to reap first. He has to reap them quickly before he loses them. This is how sin, this is how bad it is in the world at that time. While the meteors are hitting, guess what? He's collecting his people. In reading, turn with me to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And that fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star. It's in the Greek, 792 meteor fall. So when it says in your Bible that he saw a star, it would read, And I saw a meteor fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Because in the bottom of the spit is the remainder of Satan's angels and himself. Take note. For example, number one, the seven trumpets was written by James White, 1875 edition. The information that he received there, he received it from other scholars. But these trumpets, you have to be very, very keen here. They're to be repeated. 
Trumpet after trumpet is going to sound in the last days in preparing the people for the harvest. You want heaven? You're going to have to repent. Number two, in the book entitled by Maxwell, God Cares, Volume 2, the message of revelation that has been given should be studied and analyzed once again. Now, just to share a little things, we know that there's a, an eclipse coming on Monday. I don't care if the eclipse is coming. It has nothing to do with the second advent, period. It's just an issue that's going to occur. Prior to what's going to occur on Monday, it's what occurred in 2017 and beyond in history, etc. It's been occurring for many times. And although they want to go ahead and put an A for a leaf in Hebrew, only our Savior is going to let us know what happens after the incident occurs. Are you with me now? So, let's look at Venus, Mars, Mercury, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune. There's no life out there. The only life you will ever find, UFOs, is the Earth. UFOs, they're in the earth. And those UFOs is Satan and his fallen angels. Welcome to the sanctuary. It's spinning. And the only reason why the earth got light is because there's sun in the midst of it. And the earth is rotating around the sun. Size is given or the approximate diameter of each body. I thought you'd like to see this because everybody's talking about the eclipse that's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Well, my question is, are you baptized? Have you repented? Are you preparing for the second coming? Are you preparing to be holy? Are you preparing and living a holy life? Only Christ knows this. And your actions speak louder than words. It is not the sun that is causing the massive heat, but internal heat is building up, ready to burst. For example, A, volcano eruption around the earth. B, internal massive heat built up. C, from the core of the earth, number one, Etna's Italy loud roar occurred March 17, 2021. Number two, in the Congo's volcano occurred in March 10, 2021. You probably remember the history in the newspapers and Times Magazine. Number three, Iceland dash preparing for an earthquake, which was March 16, 2021. This is history. The earth is ready and willing to erupt. And the one that's holding it back are the four angels. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 5, in reading your hearing, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. You know, you ought to turn to Revelation chapter, I believe it's 16 verse 18. It talks about the thunders and the earthquakes taking place when we hear the voice of Yahweh declaring the day and the hour of the coming of the sun. One the same. So in these pictures that I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing with you the buildup that's taking place in an earthquake and the eruption of volcanic hazards. There are many materials that escape from the eruption of volcanoes. And when this thing takes place and it's big and it falls and it covers a city, it can kill you because of what's in the air. In these last days, when these volcanoes take place, there will be locations on the earth that will be pitch dark. The sun's not able to penetrate. The eruption cloud. Boom. The ash is now falling. Here's the lava dome. The lava dome collapses. I thought I'd share a few pictures of you. Of, of what's happening also here in Hawaii. It's a few years back. One of them is active still in Hawaii. Here's another picture. Solar system, the distance between each object and the sun is shown in astronomical units. Equals the average of distance from Earth to the sun. It's about 93 million miles, 150 million miles in kilometers. Anyway, so 
Here we have the earth, okay? Here's the earth. Here's the sun. And then you have your moon. But out here, that everybody wants to fly to and send their space rockets, etc., etc., look for other life, etc. My question is here to NASA, why do you want to look for other life? Why are you concerned if there's air or water in these other planets? If you can't even get along with people on the Earth, black, white, Asians, Mexicans, Spanish people, Hispanos, Caucasians, Irish, English, British. You're trying to look for other life in other planets, but you can't be holy here on this Earth. It's lost. Out of a hundred, one of them went astray. Mm -hmm. And our Savior was sent to this planet to save you humans who hate each other and don't even love yourselves. You want to be homosexuals and murderers, you want to be involved in gangs, you want to be with cartels, you want to smuggle drugs, etc. You want to be in the government. Nobody cares. You continue doing what you're doing, but if you get caught, you get caught. That's, that's, that's the game. Well, guess what? You continue to be holier on this earth, and you're going to get your just rewards at the end. You continue to be wicked and sinful, you're going to get your dessert at the end. Your just desserts is annihilation. There's no purgatory. But those who have sinned are going to burn and done away with and going to burn, 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 until Yahweh says it's enough for Satan. Whew, boom. He's done away with. His ashes don't even exist. This is what life's been all about. The earth. Interesting. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 8 verse 10. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great meteor from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. A third part. Do you know how much that is in the earth's Acreage, it's a lot. Everything is over with. No, there's no life there. Global warning, it's not the sun. It's causing all this. Global temp, anomalies. Global temp, anomalies average. So from 1365, you'll see it going up and down bringing it down to the year 2000, etc. Climate central. But to be quite frank with you, there's no climate change. You see, things are getting hot because everything's disintegrating. Everything's coming to an end. This earth, it will be destroyed by fire. And we will see it recreated as Yahweh wanted it. And the righteous are going to see it to the sea of glass. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 11, and the name of the star in the Greek 792 meteor is called warm wood. And the third part of the waters became warm wood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Our Savior is going to use the weather like it's written in Job chapter 30. What's written there is that it's going to be a surprise to the people of what's coming. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have risen for centuries. Atmospheric CO2 had never been above this line. Current level. In the 1950s, it was lower. Years before today, zero equals 1950. Now, this is what NASA has, but NASA's not ever always been correct. So, everybody's waiting for Monday to see the whole eclipse. I hope you're getting ready for heaven. I hope you're getting ready to repent. That's what you should be doing. And if you want to get some glasses so you can see that eclipse, like my wife says, I want to see the eclipse. 
Well, I hope you can put on some glasses so that you can see Yeshua HaMashiach spiritually. So your names are written in the book of life, the book of remembrance. Because while the earth is spinning, Mercury spinning, Venus is trying to catch up. And guess what? Somebody's coming for us. And that's Yeshua HaMashiach. He's coming to the Orion. It's got seven stars. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have Earth, Venus, the Sun, Mercury, and Mars. Here's the Earth. April 23rd, 2009. Look at the Earth, as well as the other planets. When our Savior comes for us, it's going to be so pitch back, black, dark, no one's going to see it. You're going to see nothing but the ship, the city coming with the host of heaven. What I'm trying to share here with you is that no one knows the day nor the hour of the second coming of Yeshua HaMashiach. Not even myself. We're running out of time, I'll say that. And as we're running out of time, our Savior wants us to have a better view of who He is because He died for us. In Job 38, verse 31, Cast thou bind the sweet influences of Pelides or loose the bands of Orion. So this is the Southeast January evening. Here's the Pelides. Okay, here's the Orion. One, two, three, four. You got three planets there in the center. This is Orion's belt. In Amos 5, 8, Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning. Can we hear an amen? And maketh the day dark with night. They calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Yahweh is his name. It's not God. It's not Dios. It's Yahweh. His son, he says, I come in my father's name. Yahushua. Y-A-H, Yahweh, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A is Yahushua, or Yeshua in Aramaic. Holy Sabbath, everyone. I picked this up. I thought it would be interesting. This is the Red Fury, Red Dragon of old. Satan is trying to destroy everybody in the earth, even the wicked ones. Who think that they're doing good, he wants to destroy them as well. I wanted to share this with us tonight just to give us a glimpse of what's really occurring is that the Father owns everything that's out there. He's protecting you so that you may repent and be baptized because he's coming and we need to get ready for him. We need to be at the Merry Supper of the Feast, and the only way to get there is to be found worthy. Can we hear an amen? Turn with me to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Take note. Stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which, which was before the throne. Revelation 14, verse 18. And another angel came out from the altar, Revelation 8, verse 3, and Revelation 14, verse 18, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that sat on the sharp, cried with a loud cry, excuse me, to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, which is Yeshua, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes. The grapes are the wicked are fully right, verse 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle 
into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of Elohim. This is at the third millennium. Men may not see or appreciate their efforts, but the names of these faithful children of God are written in heaven among his noble workers. Noblest workers. As scattering his seed in view of a, glor a glorious harvest, ye shall know them by their fruits. Manuscript 24, 18, 87. Take time to rest, think, and appreciate what he's given to us on this Sabbath. The Lord wants human beings to take time to rest, time to think and appreciate heavenly things. Those who do not value the things of heaven, sufficiently to give time to them, will at last lose all. Letter 181, 1903. Any questions? Pray that your names be written in the book of life. Don't worry what's going to happen Monday. Worry what's going to happen now. Now is the one important key point is that you receive the seal of Elohim on your foreheads. And that you study and have a spiritual walk with Him this evening. That you may rest. And you get ready to hear His voice tomorrow morning as He calls you into the sanctuary. Let us kneel. Our Heavenly Father who art in heaven, we thank you for your grace upon us. And thank you for the prophet informing us of what is coming in the world, in this not only Tennessee. Help us to be faithful and be good stewards and literature evangelists and missionary workers. For thy glory and for thy sake we pray and we ask for safety and peace for all the Christians and Seventh-day Adventists and Catholics and Jesuits all your people, that they may come before you and repent. That they may hear the small, still voice calling them. Be with my family, and we ask for your blessings for the 34 Angels Ministries. And Yahshua's people said, Amen.